Good morning and welcome again to another beautiful worship session today. Uh, we are going places with Jesus Ministries and we are so delighted that you are here. For those that are live, we shout out everybody that's on our live um, session this morning. And for those of you that are going to click this video in the future via YouTube, we welcome you. You are part of our global community and we love you. If you are looking at this YouTube video, make sure you give us a like, subscribe to our channel and please share this good work word with someone today. Minister Shana, we welcome you this morning. I welcome each and every one this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. I'm excited this morning. Faith over fear this morning. I cancel fear this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. On this rock I built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail this morning. The gates of hell shall not prevail in our worship this morning. The gates of hell shall not prevail this morning over us this morning. So get that out of your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Cancel that fear right now in the name of Jesus because we have faith in Jesus. We have faith as a mustard seed this morning. Faith is the key thing that you want to please God. God, because without faith, you cannot please God, because it is the substance you want for that thing you have not seen this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before I go into prayer this morning, I just want to read the scripture this morning, the word of God, the rhema word this morning that comes from God this morning. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the hell does obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world was formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. This morning, we need to lift our faith. We lift up your holy name, Jesus. Father God, I pray that out of your glorious riches, you may strengthen your people, oh God, with power through the Holy Spirit, oh God Almighty, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, rooted and established in love this morning. We pray today, oh God, that each and every one, God Almighty, near and far, that comes, oh God, on this line, oh God Almighty, Jesus, that you will lift their faith, knowing, oh God Almighty, that you are the creator, you are the El Shaddai, you are the beginning, you are the hand, oh God Almighty, Jesus, this morning. We're going to hear more about our Jesus the Culture Homeless Thanksgiving Outreach from Evangelist Sedoni. Thank you so much, Pastor Cindy. Um, good morning, everyone, locally and abroad. Thank you all so very much for joining us for our service this morning. It will be an amazing two days. Um, just getting ready for this event. It's our Jesus to the Culture Homeless Bag Drive. Okay, and what it is that we're doing. Many persons have been asking, like, what is the purpose of this event? Every year, our ministry for the past six years has gone out during the Thanksgiving season, and we've made it our point of duty of giving back to our community members. We've done it. We started out initially just giving back to the children at church. We provided a very safe space for them to come and have a really nice upscale Thanksgiving dinner. And it just kind of blossomed. It, it, it just expanded. And we decided to expand it to some of our community members. We started out with those near, very near to our church building, and it just grew until we started to go in different cities, and it literally, it just had a tumbleweed effect, and it just kept on growing and growing. So this year, we decided, you know what, we are really going to go back to some of those things that we used to do before, and that is to give back to our brothers and sisters. We believe wholeheartedly in what the Bible says about caring for those who are homeless, about caring for those who are sick about caring for those who are hungry, about caring for the widows, about caring for those who are infirmed or with sickness or illnesses. And so that is what we are doing. 
our ministry motto is caring for hurting people, sharing the love of Christ and caring for hurting people, okay? Now, we understand that our brothers and sisters who are homeless or who may be in transition, it's a different terminology, y'all, who may be in transition are in need of very, very simple things that we take for granted, okay? So what we're doing this year is we're gonna be, I wanna be, I'm gonna be showing you just a few of the items that if you are interested, you can uh, donate those items. If your event is going to be on Saturday, November 20, however, we'll be pre-packing our bags on Friday, November 19. Now, I really want to give a big shout out to one of our main sponsors of this event, um, Liberty Dental. They've been partnering with us for, I want to say, the last year and a half. Several events we've been having, they've been donating just really awesome hygiene kits. The items that we're asking anybody, even our local members, to help us out, you know, by donating these items are very small travel-ready items. Now, can everybody see this little bag right here? Right? Uh, it's, it's a little teeny bag that I put together. It has in a granola bar. It has in a little pack of just travel-sized cookies. We, I call them kid-sized stuff. And it has in kid-sized Oreos. Now, this is this may not be exactly what we're putting in the bag, but if you're donating items, we're encouraging everyone to bring them in these sizes because they're very small, very travel friendly, kid friendly. I picked up uh, this amazing little pack of wet ones. Now these with COVID, these are wet wipes, okay? Antibacterial wet wipes. The packet comes with 24 of them. This little box is just like two, like $3 in Walmart. Here's the amazing thing, boom. Okay, so our brothers and sisters can actually clean their hands on the go. These are just some of the items, just to give you an idea uh, of what items you can donate. Um, if you're donating water, we're asking you to bring the kid size water, the very small bottles, just so those things, we can put them all in a bag and hand them to our brothers and sisters. Why? Because we want to be able to make sure that the things that they're getting are travel friendly items to go. Okay. Um, now, if you go onto our website, goingplaceswithjesus.com, you're going to be seeing a green button in the top right-hand corner. It says donate. Hit that button. You can make financial donations. We are accepting financial donations into this particular mission. And we give God thanks for all the persons who have donated already, all the persons who will be donating. And thank you so very much for everyone who's been donating, the children, the adults, everyone abroad who has made it their point of duty to donate into this mission. This really is the core of who we are. We share the love of Christ and we care for our hurting brothers and sisters. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for this time, Pastor Cindy. Two of our discussion on things we need to know about salvation in Jesus. And as Pastor Roger said last week, you might be saying, well, I've been saved 100 years. I've been saved two years. I've been saved one day. We still need to understand the biblical foundational truths about salvation, if not for ourselves, to share it eloquently and simplistically to someone else, because that's what we are called to do. So without further, further ado, rather, we will welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Roger Jordan. Good morning, saints of God. God bless you. God bless you. God is such a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. I know I can't hear you, but just say hallelujah right where you are. <laughs> God is good. We're going to move forward. I tell you, we're, not, we're just going to continue in scripture, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to go straight to the point. Amen. No time to waste. Um, there is now uh, the doctrine of unconditional security, the doctrine of unconditional security. People believe this is called once saved, always saved. This is literally a doctrine. Uh, I'm really not going to go into who started it because there are several people who believed in this Reformation belief. They, a lot of people believe in it. Uh, but uh, And then there's people who uh, believe in conditional security. So now there's the, uh, the group who believes in unconditional security. And then there's a group who believes in uh, conditional security in Christ. Um, and we're going to really find out what the scriptures say, not what that person says, not what Pastor Roger has to say, not what that person over there has to say, but what does the word of God ha have to say concerning this subject? Romans 6, if you don't mind, Romans 6, 
Uh, let's start uh, second verse. Actually, it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's the question. Second verse says, God forbid, how shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. Jesus has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. How many believe that? He's brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm not trying, let me tell you something, I'm not trying to convince you to believe what I want you to believe. I want, I want the word to convince all of us on today. The word, the word of God. Uh, Luke 8 says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Amen. Luke 8, verse 11. Luke 8, verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So now, this is the Genesis. Believe means to begin. They have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior yet. They haven't even gotten to the point of believing and the enemy has snatched that word away. Now, 13 verse says, the seed on the rock are they that when they hear, receive the word. So now these individuals have actually received the word. They actually believe the word. They're actually standing on what the word of God says. But look what happens. Uh, they, when they hear, receive the word, they not, only, they, they not only receive the word, they receive the word with joy. They receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They for a while believe. You read that 13th verse? They, for a while, they believe for a while, only a little bit. And in time of temptation, fall away. If you take a seed and put it on a rock, it's not going to, it's not going to be successful. It's just not. Why? because it's not in the right environment. It's not in the right atmosphere. It's not in soil. A seed has to be in soil. And the scripture says the seed on the rock. Anyone, any farmer knows that if you put seed on a rock, it's not going to be successful. It's going to die. It's going to dry up. It may start a little something, but it's going to die. Amen. It says, and temptation came in and they fell away. 14. And that which fell among thorns are they that when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life. How many know riches, pleasures, cares of this life can shift you away from believing in Jesus Christ? I mean, that may be one's temptation. Uh, your temptation may not be... Uh, uh, the opposite sex, your temptation may be money, your temptation may be pleasure, maybe something cares of life. Amen. What does it say? And bring no fruit to perfection, but that on the good ground are they that in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring it forth fruit in with patience. Somebody say with patience. It says, I've got to what? Stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made me free. And it says, be not entangled in the yoke of bondage. And how many of us can say God, Jesus has delivered us from some serious stuff? I'm not going back there. Come on. I had no peace there. I had no joy there. And if he delivered me out of it, why in the world should I go back into it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.